Hey, hello, hello, hello. It's good to be here. I am Kathy Freeman, Kathy Freeman Art and the Adventurous Creatives. And I am on here tonight to do a project with those that are showing up. I've had quite a few that have signed up, so I'm just going to talk for a few minutes and give everybody a chance to kind of come on and join us. I'm actually streaming. Hello. I'm actually streaming in several locations, quite a few locations. Hi, Kimbro. Did I say that right? Kimbro. Lee. Hi. It's good to have you here. Um, yes, I am on my business page. Kathy Freeman Art. I am in my free group, Kathy Creates with Kathy Freeman. That's a free group that you can join if you're doing some of my uh, work in that and you want to post it in there. Um, I'm in actually into my membership group also so that they can participate in this tonight too because it's a fun little project we're doing and I'm on YouTube. <laughs> so quite a few different places. So if you will just simply like... Um, has been done already is put your name in the comments and go ahead and tell me where you're from. Where are you from? So that I get an idea of where this is streaming to and where you're watching from. And then um, I will be able to comment with you tonight and talk with you. And um, if you signed up, you were able to, and it's free. You didn't have to pay. Obviously, you know that because you're here, but there is a template that you can use and also a list of supplies. And when I'm doing this, I really find, I find it easier for me to just do it, give the ideas, give the suggestions, and then you can go back in here and start creating the way you think it needs to be created or just add your own little artsy flair to it because I think that's what's so unique is to go back and see everybody's different take on something. Same concept, but different take. Hey, it's good to have you here. I've got a few people. Okay, let's see. You are from Campbell Hill, Illinois in <coughs> Southern Illinois. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Got a few more that are showing up and they'll all come through my stream because it is all coming in here. So this is a party. This is my pop-up party. And um, I do this just a couple of times a year like this, where it's just um, everybody kind of comes together and, and I'm opening up my membership. I do a project or something to give you a taste of how I do this. From Houston, hello, Connecticut. Woo, good to have you. And West Virginia. See, this is, hi, Tammy. This is what I love is to be able to just see where everybody's from. I am in Texas myself. I am 90 minutes east of Dallas. Grew up in Dallas. Now I live over in Tyler, Texas and love it there. So Houston is a beautiful place and you're close to the ocean. So that would be neat. All right. I'm going to get going here. Um, just wanting to give people a little bit of time to get on and to welcome you and tell you it's so glad that you're here. Um, hi. Hi, Joni. Good to have you here. Did you, Joni, did you get your um, template in that? Were you able to download that and find that? I know I had a comment by one other lady. You didn't send me a comment about it, but um, I did answer your question earlier. I just hope you got your, able to get your template in that uh, signed up. Okay, good. All right, guys, we're going to get started. And I do things a little bit different here. And I'll tell you why right off the bat. I actually have my art studio. Okay, good, Joni. Great. <laughs> I have my art studio out on our farm. Yes, I'm not a farm girl. Um, my husband has always wanted to have the few little chickens and some land around him. And so my art studio is out on the farm. And, you know, out on the farm, you never know if your internet is going to be good or if it's going to go k -wampusy. And so I like to videotape my um, classes and everything ahead of time and then share them. And that way there's not that scrolling and rolling on my part, at least. Um, if somebody else is having some issues with the internet, it's always on their part. And I'm just glad that it's not me. <laughs> so I do it that way. Plus it gives me a chance when I get creating, tell me if you like this, when I get creating, I really start focusing in on my work and it's, it's challenging for me 
to look up and try to answer questions and stay focused because I'm always thinking ahead of like, well, now what do I want to do with this? I don't really plan a lot of things out with it. It's just more go with the feel. And I think that's what's super important and um, exciting. Let me turn my volume down on this because it's telling me that I'm live and I've already been live. So, <laughs> all right, this is the project we are doing tonight. And it's going to be done in two parts. I am actually going to be showing up for several nights these next few days just to talk to one, teach the class and share with you some of the tips and techniques that I do. And then to share some other information and maybe do another little short project or something. So come on in and party with us. This is actually an anniversary month for me. Um, I have been opened. Gosh, I don't think it's even it's been a year a year. <laughs> and so it's been a really fun time to do this. And I'm, I've been really excited to, to participate and to have this kind of business. I love this because I'm getting to know people a lot different and um, share some of my ideas and to talk to people I'd never get a chance to talk to. My group is pretty quiet. They probably are a lot of introverts. Um, they like to kind of stay to themselves and that. So, but that's why it's such a wonderful, safe place. Hello from Minnesota. Shelly, it's good to have you here. All right. I've yab I yabble dabbled enough. Let me go ahead and start this video. I will answer your questions and um, I will go ahead and type them out. Any comments I see, but some things that maybe I want to share that I'll go ahead and um let the video play, but speak through it, or we'll talk about it afterwards or something. So uh, it'll be kind of an interesting experience to do it this way. And we'll see what happens. All right. So let's get going. I'm going to take my face off of this and move over here. Okay. This is our project, An Easy Breezy Day. This is mixed media. We've used collage and paint and... Um, Interesting thing, too, is I've actually used on here eggshells, all right, eggshells to do this. But if you don't want to use eggshells, you could use, um, well, you could come up with a lot of different things. But you could also, what I'm thinking is you could use modeling paste because modeling paste works really well. And I may, on this particular one I'm doing for y'all, use modeling paste so you can see how that works. Basically, with the eggshells, all I did was take the egg after it was done, washed it, cleaned out the inside of it really good, all that stuff, let it dry. And once it was dry, then I crumbled it and I just glued it on here because I wanted it to have kind of a rocky looking texture at the bottom. And that's what creates that. So you can decide what you're going to use for this. What we're going to need is a 9 by 12 is what I've done this project on. And this is watercolor paper. And I just happened to pull out a couple of magazine pieces and that to start my collage with. So I've got this outdoor. I thought to myself, okay, easy breezy day. <laughs> what really symbolizes something like that? And I saw these beautiful flowers and I thought, well, that symbolizes outside. I like to put book pages in because it really has the neat with having the text in that and of course um, anything to do with uh, like look here this this is an old 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 book that I had breeze of spring that's kind of neat I thought no that'll be neat so I'm going to put that, that in there too and place that so let's get started that's what we'll start with first all right we'll take that now to collage with I like to use right here this matte medium I like to use a matte medium uh, this is a liquid I have it also in a paste if I was using paper that was thicker uh, like well even the watercolor paper if it was thick like the watercolor paper um, or some of your other thicker papers I would use modeling paste but because I'm doing something that's got thinner paper, I'll just use this liquid matte medium. And as you notice, I have my hands gloved because a lot of times when I'm doing a background, I might end up using my hands with it. And so it just makes keeps me from getting all yucky. Some people have always asked, and I've heard other people ask on other places, can I use Mod Podge? 
personally, I am not a fan of Mod Podge for this uh, particular stage of the project. Why? Because for me, it's it's more of a finisher. And so um, sometimes it does say it's glue, but see it says sealer and finisher. It's a glue, but it's a sealer and finisher. So with that that uh, aspect, the sealing and finishing, it can be a little tricky to put other layers on top when you're trying to paint or add something to it. It can be done. So if Mod Podge is what you have, use that. Uh, and then you could come back over and put, well, you won't have this, will you? You can put gesso over the top of it. Try that. Um, like I said, I've not really experimented with it too much. I've only used Mod Podge when it was the glue in the last layer of what I was doing. So, but if that's what you have. The other thing you could use, though, is to use good old, um, and I just happen to have a little jar of it here, but just regular, like, school glue, and then have it watered down so that it works that way. You can use that. All right. I can use um, an, a brush that I have. I've got this wide one. I'll probably use, let's see where are mine. These brushes, I have designated brushes that I use specifically for this. I also have, uh, you can use like a credit card or something. Something that's, you know, obviously you're not going to use a good credit card, but something that you can kind of spread it with once you get it on. Right, let's just get going. And I'm going to start with this right here. Now I'm ripping off the sharp edges. And that is because the start sharp edges makes an abrupt ending. And I don't want a line going across. I want it to uh, flow, to blend. So I usually, on most of my work, get rid of, unless I use the sharp edges, if it's going up against an edge. All right, we're going to place this. Let's just place that here. I'm going to go ahead and just pour this on. I'll pour it on here first. And you can use your fingers like I am. Just do a little finger painting. Or use a brush, like I said, or a credit card. Something just to get it all over the surface. I have something on my table here. Give me a second. Time out, time out. What is that? There we go. <laughs> right. I tend I usually use a brush. But when I'm in a hurry like this, I've got a short amount of time. I'm trying to give you a, a, a little presentation. And sometimes you just have to resort to using your fingers, right? Because you can get it a lot faster. Now, this is a magazine paper. So because it is so thin, I'm going to start getting wrinkles in that with it. But that's all right because it, the wrinkles, for me, add um, a, you know some interest, character to it. Try to keep from having air bubbles, though. And just work those out. If you get something, that means there's not enough glue underneath. Oh, and you could, you know, I could just leave it like that. Glue that over the top. It's not going to matter, is it? Let's go ahead and use the brush. Like so. And I've got an air bubble here, which means I don't have any glue underneath, but it wants to just flip itself right over, which is perfect. All right, let's go for a page. the 
glue on that. And see, I've got a, a sharp edge right here. And so, pull this up so it's under the camera. So I'll put it up against the edge, like so. when I'm using my paste it I don't have to quite use I don't have to use so much but all right now let's see some of my music pieces here breeze of spring let's just rip that page like that Take off the edge, and this is really old because it's just coming apart on my fingers. Bring that up here, and I'm going to place it down like this. So, I'll just place that right here. So have some more music. Got this pretty well wet right here, so we can add in piece push it right up to the edge grab some glue all right Here at the top, a little more liquid. Now, if you're trying to do this, usually in my group, it's it's good. To, you know, it's nice to watch. I've had people work right along with me and do things, but it it's almost like it's a little better if you do watch first and then do it because you might think of, oh, I need to do that, or, oh, I, I think I'll change it and do it this way because it's nice to come up with your, you know, take the basics of what I'm showing you and then create your own, your own interpretation of that, your own design of it. I know I gave you a template and that you're welcome to use that. But you might come up with something just using, you know, the concept of what we have here, something totally different, which is wonderful to do. All right. I'm going to leave just like that. I'm going to let that, now we're going to dry that super quick. The next fun thing is to start painting the sun. And simple as that is, we're just going to put, I'm not going to do the yellow part yet. Okay, this will be uh, tomorrow evenings when we start doing some of the yellow on top. What we're going to do is just do the red and orange in here. And then start gluing down the strips coming out. 
all right? And then the last thing we'll do is add our texture on the bottom, and then we're just gonna let it have a good dry overnight before we start up next. Okay, so I've got this to where I can go ahead and paint it. Clean off my work surface a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put what the colors I've used for the sun is this Deep Persimmons by Anita's and a Cardinal Red by Folk Art. You could use anything, you know, you basically look for an orange and look for a nice deep red. Give myself a good little squirt of that and another little squirt of this. Get a paintbrush use this nice large round tip and let's start with the orange I'm going to do this right over this paper so I don't have to worry about my edge I can come off of it just like so Okay. okay. Come back with the red. And I'm going to blend this in some areas. So it blends and then other areas. I want the orange. I don't want to completely blend the whole thing. So some of it you blend in and some of it you won't. Make it a nice big sun. That's how easy. We're not... Yeah. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. That's going to need to dry overnight. So we're done with that. The next step now, now when you have excess paper uh, paint like this, the nice thing is to paint it on another piece of paper of some kind like uh, maybe your print paper from the printer. We used to call it typing paper. <laughs> print paper. Uh, you could even do it on this because this makes a great surface because then you can use this as collage also. So I'm going to do that for a minute. I'm just going to spread it out on here so I can use this. Oops. Just going to spread it out. It'll make a great collage paper. Might as well do it before it dries, okay? So, I'm thinking. Just get it right off your brush. There we go. And we will take that and set it over. It can dry. We're not going to use it for this project, but you might need it for something else. Okay, now the fun part is gluing on. And once again, I will use my matte media. I'm going to give a little dry to the edge here just so that I don't there. okay now for the rays and this is really fun because I used on this original one um, pieces you know from envelopes I got in the mail see that just any kind of scrap paper that you have works great uh, you want the contrast. Having the black and white contrast works really nice. So I pulled out a couple things I had. I had some papers here with words. Just anything to kind of give some contrast. And I already started ripping some of these and pulling some of these. You'll need quite a few. And this is a dictionary page, an old, old dictionary. It's really nice to use those if you've got, because you've got the dark lettering. 
get my brush. just started ripping a few just ahead of time here so that I have a few. Okay, I'm going to put this lighter down here because it's on a dark background. So stick that one on. Stick this one on. And we're just going to cover up. You got to just rip them off to a point at the end. So have those stand out really well against that dark. Pour a little more. All right, let's put this is kind of neat. That one out there. Like so. Just fill them in. Let's think about sun rays. Fill it in. Pull that off. Okay. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm also thinking the rays, I, you know where I want them to end so that maybe some longer ones coming down here on the bottom might be fun. A little bit longer than what I have up here on the sides. Put that glue down there. Stick that one down. Okay, I'm going to go try one of these just for the fun of it. The paper. I think that's really neat. Okay, got some more musical notes. Let's put a little drop down here. Go down with the musical notes like that. All right, so you're just filling it in. Fill it all in with this wonderful text and okay. Right like this. I think I have here the dark. Just put that one right there. Kind of fat up here at the top. Don't need it to be that fat. Like so. All right. How are we doing? I need a little more up here. Okay. We'll rip that. Okay. Let's see, I've got another piece here. You can start overlapping them a little if you need to. I'm going to take one more of these. Put 
over the top here. Just kind of layer that one on. Good. And let's layer it again up here in the short piece. Okay, so you're starting to build layer upon layer. right here. Stick this one in here. Let's see, we'll start with the larger edge up here. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I'm gonna layer a little bit more. I want, to, let's see, what do I wanna use? Go back to this. And I've got these two close, so I'm gonna put another one right in the middle there. take away from, yeah, separate them a little bit more. All right. See, that's very easy to do, isn't it? If you want, we could add see, another book page. This book page is really easy to you know, get it to go the way I need it to go. Do I need any more in there? Maybe here? Covers that one up, but also gives a nice There we go. Let's have it go in all directions. Okay, so there's our sun. We've got that complete. How are you doing? So we've got our background almost complete and ready to dry. The last thing that we want to do for this is to add the bottom. And I do have, I have eggshells here I can use. I'll go ahead and do a little bit of that so you can see. I already crumpled some up. Now with the eggshells, I will use craft glue. Something that will make them stay. There we go. Need to have that opened. Just put down that craft glue and it's kind of like sprinkling glitter. So crunch them up and then sprinkle them on like so and let them fall as they may. <laughs> okay, we're gonna shake them down a little bit and get the extras. Kind of press them in there. This is a really nice texture. So when we go back and add the paint, the color, kind of gets in between and, you know. All right, so that's the eggshell. Whoops, shake some of that off, move that over. And now let me show you modeling paste. If you're new to watching me, you will soon learn that I love to use modeling paste. 
Okay. You can do so much with it. Let me grab the spatula here. What I'm going to do with this one is, and I need to get a paper, not that. I needed to grab something that would go underneath really quick protect your surface and it just makes it more liberating so you can work with it so I'm going to put it on like so and I'm just my whole idea with this when I did this was just to create something on the bottom that would be um, have texture to it so that when I put the paint on it would uh, be different it wouldn't be flat so as you can see what I'm doing here is I am just tapping it after I've put it on I'm just going back and tapping it you can scrape some off if you get a little too much because you don't need that much but if you do, it's good you're going to dry it uh, overnight so it will give it plenty of time to dry. That's one thing is you do want when you're using the modeling paste, you want it to give it time to dry. And it wants to pull that magazine page right up. Isn't that interesting? So it would be good that it's going to sit and dry because it will harden that down. Okay, that's all, I, that's all you have to do with that. That's that easy. Create that texture. All right. All right, this is the end of our first lesson here. And we're going to let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll start adding the paint to it and the other things. All right, <laughs> I am back. Um, I clicked it off right there really quick. Did you get to um, anybody work along with me? I put a little message out there. I was curious, did anybody get to work along with me? Um, I hope that I give you as an assignment, or I, I don't like to say assignment, but your homework is to go ahead and, and to get that complete and let it give it time so it dries because tomorrow what we'll do is yeah. tomorrow evening when I come back on, that's when we start adding the paint to it and the gesso. Um, I like to think of the projects as usually in about three phases. You know, the three phases is um, good, Tammy. Yes, watch tonight. Um, there is a replay. So wherever you're watching it at there, you know, whichever location you're watching it at right now, the replay will be there. So you'll be able to see it. Um, I like to think of these as having three phases. First, you need your background. Then you're going to add your main subject to it, what it is your main focal point, what you're working on, and then add some of the detailing. Um, the, the, here, this one has completely all eggshells on it. And I was, when I was doing this, I was trying to think, now what could somebody do and use if they didn't have modeling paste, because there was a long time that I never had modeling paste. And what is it that they could use? And that's why I thought, oh, eggshells. <laughs> that would be very simple. So that is an easy solution if you don't have a modeling paste to create that bottom. And you might have something else. So it'll be kind of fun to see what you come up with. And then as you get through with this, if you'll go into... If you're not a member of it, it's just a free group and it's Kathy Creates with Kathy Freeman. That's on Facebook, Kathy Creates with Kathy Freeman. And it's my free group and those that um, are doing some of these uh, free classes I do and that uh, participate in some of the other classes that I teach, then that's a place that they can post it and be able to share. But share what it is that you create tonight and put it in there because it'll be fun to see. Um, see your product now now I said this is a great time for me because I have opened up my membership and so many of you maybe are part of other memberships or you um, 
have seen other people's memberships. And so as you always kind of look around, uh, you think, well, what's really the difference? And I'm not sure that mine to be 100% is that much different than anybody else, except for a couple things. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Um, I know that there are some wonderful artists out there. And so I never like to say, well, mine's better or whatever, because I don't believe in that. But I do want to give you just a taste of what some of the things is that I like to share with my um, members that are in there. And I call them art sisters. Uh, it's the Adventure Adventurous Creatives. And um, I'm actually going to be working on that name a little bit. I've had it for a year and I'm I love it, but it's a little bit long and it's a bit of a mouthful. So it's something that we're going to work on and probably do a little bit of a tweaking too. This piece right here is a mixed media piece that we did a couple of months back. And it has a lot of techniques in it, a lot of techniques. It uses the modeling paste to create the this, this structure and the texture for the bricks. Um, we use acrylic paint, we use inks, we use um, stencils. That is the fun thing about mixed media is um, I've always been in a, um, a painter and have done that all my life. But mixed media is something that I love to do. It's probably my most favorite because I can incorporate so many different things and I'm not limited to one, one particular thing. Every once in a while, I've got to do something that's got a little bit more of um, 3D because there's something about having something that looks like you just want to reach out and touch it and that it has such a tactile um, element to it. And that is, so every once in a while, I'll throw in these 3Ds for those that maybe like to have something like that. This is made out of, someone had said crepe paper, but I said, no, this is paper towel. This is something that everybody has. And that's something else that I try to, to strive for is to not make it so complicated that you have to go out and buy a bunch of things, but you can use what you have around your location. Quotes, I think, are super important also. Um, one thing that I posted, but I didn't get to say, and that is clear gesso. Clear gesso would work really, really well. Um, to put over if you've got, if you're using the uh, Mod Podge or something, because the clear gesso, when you put it on, it has a little bit of a milky film when you put it on, but it dries completely clear and it gives it that surface so that other things will stick to it and they won't peel off or, or come off later. So if you didn't see my little note on that, clear gesso is a great thing to have. Uh, what else did I want to share with you? I work a lot in art journals. And I jump around from the sizes of nine by 12 to this one here, which is a seven by 10. There's something about a seven by 10 that I like to use. It's like, it's just enough space, but it's not overwhelming. And I like to work in art journals too, because the art journals uh, gives it a kind of a place. You don't have a lot of things, you know, floating around that you're trying to figure out what to do with. So we work in our art journals. We make, um, little uh, cards that can be sent out, etc. Now, something that's going on for tonight and the next and tomorrow. And that is, is a, a bonus that I'm giving is to have um, a 30 minute call with me and to be able to talk about some of the questions that you have, anything that comes up. And so if you sign up for tonight up through tomorrow night, then the bonus is, is still, it's, uh, make a, a time that we can get on the phone and chat for 30 minutes or so and be able to communicate. What are some of your needs? What is it that you're looking for? That's really important to me because that helps to guide me and to steer me. And also just to get to know you. It was so fun when I first started um, and she's still with me, Robin, Robin, I love her. She's from Australia and she could never make my lives because literally she is on the opposite side. And so for us to stay up, we would have to stay up really, really late for her early morning. And so I did that one night just by myself. We got on the telephone and had a great conversation. And it's been such a blessing to me to get to know her and to be part of her. Something else that is in my group, though, that is offered is uh, I, for 18 years, worked as what's considered a positive life coach. And so uh, positive thinking and um, being able to 
uh, work through some of our fears because a lot of times creativity, being able to express ourselves and be creative, fears pop up. And so in my group, I consider the um, website that I've created like a little wellness retreat. I have a location in there that's not open to everyone that has music that is accessible to the art sisters that they can listen to it as they're playing or just that they have, you know, maybe another need. For example, I got a really sweet note from um, one of the art sisters and she uh, explained to me, she says, I just feel like I need to let you know that I haven't been super active, meaning I hadn't seen her in some of the, the things that we're doing because she had something going on with her husband that was pretty life-threatening. And she said, I was dealing so much with that. I was overwhelmed with everything. And she said, I, to go to the art, it just was too much for me. But she went to, a, I have a piece of music on there that was created by my husband. And all the music in there is created by my husband that was played. It was something that he created during a very... Um, let's say stressful time in our life. Okay. And it, uh, I won't go into the details of it. It was a situation with, we, well, now I kind of led up to that. That sounds so silly. We had an, a daughter at, at 17 that was killed in a car accident. And so art is a great way to express a lot of our emotions and to be able to, to process and to work through some of those things. Music was his avenue to be able to work through that grief that he felt. And so that piece of music is in there is called comfort. And it's such a blessing because it's, it's, it's a piece that if you've had um, maybe just even a bad day, you went to work, you came home and you're like, oh my gosh, will this day ever end? It's a wonderful piece to listen to, to just kind of lift some of that out. So anyway, not to go into that a lot, I try to create in my website, it's on a campsite. And that's just because I want to give a different locations for people to easily find where they need to be. But in there is my little wellness center. It's called the nursery. And um, it's like helping little plants to nurture and grow. That's exactly what um, is this is for, is to be able to um, help each of us to nurture our art and to grow. Is there any questions I can answer? I've just kind of carried on here a little bit. Is there any questions? Let's see, Casey, you did it. Did you work along with me tonight? I see you said I did. So <laughs> you must have had yours done. That's awesome. Go ahead and post it, Casey, in the Kathy uh, Creates with Kathy Freeman group. If you're not a part of it, just it's free. It's it's open. Just go ahead and put your name in there and then I'll let you in. But I, uh, and I'll post you in there. Anyway, we will be back here tomorrow, same time, same creative station, all right? Is there any questions I can answer? Uh, this will be replayed. It will be on the location that you are right now. You can find it on that location, all right? I will post in here also my link to uh, get to read a little bit more, look at some of the projects and find out what it is that um, I do. So you can see that. And if you're interested in that, good night, Joni. It's good to have you. Joni is a really great one to always be here. And it's nice to have her. She always pops up and, and supports. So it's really great to have her. All right. We will talk with you again tomorrow. And until then, you have a wonderful, creative evening.